Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag. And today I'm bringing you a tutorial for the Ruby handbag. Look at this sweet little thing. It's a great, great bag. I love the style of it. I love how big it is. It's very nice and roomy on the inside. I love this front flat pocket. Nice big slip pocket here. Um, so many fun details to this bag. I did not put bag feet on, but if you wanted to, you could totally add bag feet. I think if I were to make this again, I would do that. This is my first run through of this pattern and I didn't have any issues. It was easy breezy and bag stock patterns read so nicely that I don't think you'll have any issues um, reading this pattern. So anyways, let's go over. So it's Super cute, slip pocket on top. It's got a cross body strap. I did mine um, contrasting, double-sided. I should kind of show you how I did that. Um, I love these cute handles. I said while I was doing it that I'm not sure if I would make the handles bigger or not. This is the pattern recommended size is 14, which is what I did. Um, if you want a bag that you can throw over your shoulder, you definitely need to lengthen that. All right, I'm not sure how it would look. It would give it a different look if you did that because it's just meant to be cute little handles that you grab. Plus you have this crossbody strap, so it's up to you. Just thoughts though. Um, anyways, on the inside, we have our recessed zipper. And um, you have another zipper pocket here and you have a divided slip pocket on this side and tons of room. It is so big down there. This is a nice big handbag. Um, trying to think if there's any other little details. All the hardware I used on this bag were from my website. That's kind of exciting. I didn't have to go anywhere else for my hardware for this. This is all from my website. Um, Mora faux leather, Hawthorne threads, linen cotton, and fabric.com waterproof canvas for the inside. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It was my first one back after taking a break for a few weeks, so I'm a little rusty, but I think it turned out okay. Um, enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe, and let's get going. Okay, let's go over our pieces that we need for this Ruby handbag. Again, this is my first time doing this pattern, so I just interfaced it and did all the pieces like I think I want it. So hopefully it's correct. Um, I did use, I'm using Mora faux leather from Emmeline. I'm using waterproof canvas from fabric.com and it's Ottertex waterproof canvas. And I'm using a um, cotton canvas from Hawthorne Threads for my floral pieces. I interfaced with Woven Fuse 2 on all those cotton canvas and then on my outer pieces, I use Decaville Light on all of my outer pieces instead of foam. I'm doing the Decaville Light instead of foam this time. I feel like both make a great bag and I just wanted to use the Decaville on this one. So we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so um, I have my two front and back main pieces, all interface, woven fuse, Decaville Light, okay? If you are sewing on a domestic, I would always suggest to keep your seam allowances light. So um, maybe cut the interfacing out of your seam allowances if you're worried about the thickness of the bag on your machine. Um, I don't have that issue, so I'm going to just leave it in my seam allowances. Okay, so front and back there. I have my contrasting faux leather in my side panels. These are my side panels and my bottom. I did do just a layer of Decaville Heavy on my bottom piece. You can use Peltex, you can use foam, um, but definitely put something extra on the bottom of it. And I kept it out of my seam allowances on the bottom because it just lays nicer overall when you do it that way, especially with the heavier interfacing. Okay, got that. I've got my front slip pocket pieces here and waterproof canvas, I don't interface. And then I have my flap 
This is going to be my flat. It's waterproof canvas and the faux leather. And I did interface with a Decaville light out of my seam allowances. Uh, if you're just using fabric, you just use fleece. That works too. Um, again, I mean, there's so many different ways you can interface these bags. I'm just showing you my preferred method. Okay, there's that. Um, for my top inside panel, I've got those two pieces, the top part of the lining. I'm doing the faux leather for that. I've got my recessed zipper panel pieces. There should be four of those. And I already put some tape on my ends. This is how I do my recessed um, zipper panels and I'm going to just fold those. That's a fourth inch. I'm just gonna fold those down evenly on all four sizes, all four sides before I start. I will show you that. Um, okay, and I have my handle pieces. These are my top handles. I've already folded one in. This is my other one. My crossbody strap, I've kind of already put together. I will kind of go over how I did that. I just need to sew it up. And I'm doing a double-sided, that's why. I'll show you. And then you should have your D-ring connector pieces, your lining pieces. There should be two bottom lining pieces, okay? My bottom of my lining, my sides of my lining, my slip pocket pieces, two of them interface with woven. And my zipper pocket pieces, two of them interfaced with one. Now, some people ask, do you have to interface this cotton canvas? You don't have to. Um, especially when you use it for the lining, you don't have to. I prefer to because I like the feel of it and how it makes it a little bit more sturdy. And my machine, again, can handle it. So that is a personal preference. I have the zipper for my zipper pocket. The hardware you need is two D-rings, two zippers, um, Crossbody strap pieces if you're doing the crossbody. You don't have to do a crossbody on this bag either. It would look cute without as well. Uh, so I have two swivel hooks, a slider. I have a twist lock for the front little flap. And I have my nameplate. And that is all the pieces we need for this. So we're going to get started. All right. Okay, so for my crossbody strap, I've shown this before on how I do this double-sided. Um, <clears throat> I did have to piece together... Um, two strips because my fabric wasn't long enough and you just do that like you do a binding at a 45 degree angle so I went ahead and did that I these were two inches wide so I folded them into the middle my raw edge is in and then I cut my floral a little two inches three inches shorter than my leather and sewed my ends together okay just like normal and then you're gonna fold it over and it's gonna look like that when it's all sewn together. So this kind of goes over to the back. And it's just my preferred method of crossbody straps. There's a few different ways that you can do these double-sided ones. Um, that's how I do it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together. And I this length is about at a 54, I think. I like my crossbody straps pretty long. So you can have that option. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew this crossbody strap up and put that aside. And that is my cross body strap. Do you see how that looks at the end there? I kind of like that finish. And so I'll go ahead and I will attach my slider here. 
and I'll do a rivet probably off camera, but um, I'll put that on there. I'll rivet that. And then I'll put on my hooks. So I do one on this end. I slide it in all the way down and then I'll go up and over and attach the other hook. Okay, so that's my crossbody. We'll move on to the bag. So first we're going to work on the front flap for our bag. Um, I have my Decaville light for this one out of my seam allowances. You can use fleece and I have my waterproof canvas on the other side. We're gonna sew at a half inch seam allowance and I think I'm just gonna sew around my four edges and then turn, or my three, this under here and I'm not sewing along my top at all for me. Um, I think it'll fold better with the faux leather and the waterproof canvas if you're using cotton you would want to leave just like a, a three inch hole along the top like that. So this is just because of the materials I'm using. I'm going to do it this way. Half inch seam allowance for most of this pattern. Okay, and then you want to trim your seam allowance down to about a fourth inch. I'll show you on that side, it's a little bit better. Actually, I'm going to use my pinking shears here along the curves. I think, I think that might be a little bit better, at least along these curves. Okay, and then you wanna turn it out. The reason I left such a big hole for mine was because I used the Decaville light and it would be harder to turn through that small three inch hole. That's why I did it this way. Looking nice there. And it's not gonna be perfect, and that's okay. All right. And then I am going to fold under my top piece here. And you want about a half inch, which luckily my Decaville light is a good little guide for me to fold it down at that half inch. So that's how I'm going to measure that.
And then we're gonna wanna sew it completely shut. And top stitch around. Okay, so there is my, oh, there is my flap. Okay, I'm going to top stitch around all the flap and then we're going to add our um, hardware for the flip lock. Okay, that turned out all right. There's my flap. And now I'm going to add the lock. So on your, on your interfacing fleece piece for your lock, it has um, how far up you want it. You want it 0.75 up from the bottom and I am going to just use my piece here to mark it so I can get it centered and everything. I'm just gonna go just about right there. That looks perfect. I'm gonna mark it. And that is where we want the center of our turn lock to be or a flip lock or whatever you put it on. Okay, so I have a, a hand press with plates. Um, if you don't have this luxury, then you can use scissors. That works too. Um, can I show you there? So here is my lock piece that we're putting on. It's got two pieces to it, a front and a back. This part has two little screw holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my die that I have. I ordered this set off of, you can find it on Amazon, a bunch of different pieces. And I got the one that I feel like will fit this lock and the little screws the best. Um, Cause you wanna cut out where these screws are too. I may have to use scissors and just snip a little bit more, but that's kind of how I measure it. Okay, and I'm just going to center that marking in the middle of my die here. So I want my die directly in the middle there. And I'm gonna put it under. Again, if you don't have this, just use scissors, mark it out and use scissors. And the person I got my press plates for no longer sells them. So I'm not sure, I've heard of a couple of different places. I'll try and figure that out um, and po post it in the comments or in the description. So there is my little hole there that I've done. So that's what it's going to look like. And I'm just, just going to cut a tiny, tiny little bit more out right along the sides to make room for my screws. Not a big cut, just a small little. Perfect, just like that. Okay, 
I'm gonna take that, got my tiny little screws, and my screwdriver. And my back plate here, we put that over. Now, if you have um, cotton material, you might wanna put some fray check on your material before you put this piece on, just so it doesn't fray. And I got this little screwdriver off of Amazon. It's called General is the brand. And that's that's that, that's how you do that. Make sure those are nice and tight in there, I think they are. And that is your flap. All right, all right, next step. Okay, so after your flap is done, you're gonna work on your front slip pocket piece. So there's a marking on your pattern piece as to where to place the um, bottom part of the flip lock. Okay, so this piece, turn lock, flip lock, whatever you're using. Um, I use my washer as a good um, indicator where to put my holes so I know my flip lock is the second to the most outer markings on my washer. So I'm gonna center that up on this marking here, right in the center. And that's where I want my flip lock to go. I'm also going to put a piece of Peltex under it, since this is kind of a thin piece that I'm putting it on. And I don't want my prongs to damage my fabrics. Okay, so I'm putting it on my front slip pocket piece. The outer one. Where are my markings here? Sorry, there they are. Okay, I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. Not too big. put in my washer okay I also want to protect the back here with some you could fuse another piece of interfacing over that I'm just putting a piece of tape over it. It's just thick double-sided tape and I don't take off one side because it's really sticky. So it sticks over my prongs pretty well. Just like that. All right, so that's my bottom piece. So next you want to take the inside of that outer slip pocket, which will be waterproof canvas for me, and we're going to sew along the top. Add a half inch seam allowance. And then we'll go from there. Right sides together. Once you have that done, you want to flip it and top stitch it. And 
And my stitch lengths on my machine, I go from a four to about a five when I top stitch. Four when I'm sewing everything together to about a five when I top stitch, five to five and a half. Um, I think machines have different indicators of lengths. Um, it's a pretty long length, stitch length. I have found if I do short, small stitch lengths, especially when I'm using vinyl or faux leather, it pierces and cuts the material too much and it tears it. So you definitely want a longer stitch length when you're sewing with vinyl and faux leather. That's just my experience. Okay, so that is my bottom slip pocket for my outside. So next I wanna take my front panel piece here. Actually, I'm gonna use the other one because, no, this one's good. All right, and you wanna put on your flap. So your flap goes 5.75 inches up from the bottom. I am gonna mark my centers or clip my centers real quick. I haven't done that on my pieces. It always is a lot easier putting these bags together if you do that. So mark your center somehow, however you want to. And then I'm going to mark my center line first. And then I'm going to mark 5.75 inches up here. 3.75. And that's where I want my flap placement to go. And you kind of want to get the center of your flap here, right side down on top of that line and center it. Just like that, okay? I'm going to sew that on eighth inch seam allowance, and then again at a fourth inch seam allowance. So you're doing two lines of stitching on this, okay? Yep, all right. And I'm not clipping it down with anything, I'm just holding it. Holding it in place. So this is my eighth inch seam allowance line first. And then I'm going to sew again at one fourth. Sorry if I say a fourth or fourth. I'm trying to remind myself not to do that. Okay, so sew at one fourth seam allowance now. Okay, that's what mine looks like. Because when it's done, it's gonna be folded down like that. So you won't even really be able to see these stitches, but that's what mine looks like. I am going to maybe just melt any of my threads here that are hanging out. All right, so after you do that, get the bottom outer slip pocket piece we were working on right here. And you're going to stick that to your um, piece that we were just working on. Center that up. Keep it straight. Make sure it lines up. And that's what mine's going to look like when I sew it on. It looks good. Okay, so I am going to attach that by just basting it down on the three sides. Okay, so go ahead and baste that pocket down.
just like that. Double check, make sure it looks okay. Pull it down, flip your lock. Looks good. Okay, so that's the front part of my ruby. I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to um, put my nameplate, I think about right here is where I want mine. You could put it down here if you wanted to, but you would have had to do that before we sewed all that together. All right, I'm gonna put my nameplate on and we'll move on. Okay, so next we're going to our lining pieces. I marked the center of my lining. I found the center and then I did one inch down from the top here. I don't know if you can see it, one inch down. Um, I got my zipper pocket piece one inch down from the top and marked out my zipper rectangle. All the measurements are in the pattern for that part. I'm going to place it right there. So total it's two inches down from the top to where you start your, um, your rectangle for your zipper. So I did one inch, one inch, and then there. Um, go ahead and sew around your rectangle. And we'll get our zipper put in. And my right sides are together. So right side is up on my lining, right side of my um, zipper panel is down. Right sides together. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to push that through to the other side. Over here, maybe, there it is. And then I am going to take this to my iron very carefully with a Teflon sheet because I do have the waterproof canvas and I'm just gonna iron that down and give it a bit of a crease. Well, maybe I don't have to. I don't think I will. It's laying down pretty nicely. Take it to an iron if you need to. Push that down. And then we are going to put our zipper in that. I'm just gonna go like that for a minute. Get your zipper right here. And I have double-sided tape, top and bottom. And I'm just gonna do one side at a time, okay? So I just undo one side at a time. And I'm gonna fit that in there in the center. Okay, just like that. And then I flip it up and take off the other side. Flip it up and put my top on. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew around that. Did I do it the wrong way? Shoot. I did my zipper the wrong way. That's okay, this is what I'm gonna do, watch this. 
I need to put my zipper going the other way because you usually want your zippers going from left to right. So let me fix that real quick. See if I can do this without taking out all of the zipper. Yep, there we go. Now it's going the right way. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on. Okay, there we go. And then you wanna take your other, see how that's in there? Looks good. You wanna take your other piece and we're gonna just put it right on top, okay? Just like that, ignore that. I messed up my, <laughs> I messed up my zipper placement on that one. Okay, so see, I messed up. I mess up a lot. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna pin this right on top and you're gonna sew the three sides and not the bottom because you're gonna leave your bottom open, okay? So I'm just sewing the three sides closed on my zipper pocket. So you could have ironed your, your edges up before you did that if you wanted to. Um, I probably will before I put the whole bag together. So there is your zipper pocket. So let's head to the slip pocket real quick on the other side. All right, here's my pieces for my slip pocket. I'm just gonna take them right sides together and sew along the top, turn them over and top stitch. I'm gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Okay. Press that real good with my fingers there. And then you want a top stitch. that and then we're going to attach it to our lining piece. I'm just marking my center real quick here. I'm going to mark my center here so I can mark my panel center as well. Okay so we're going to put our slip pocket piece on top. Line it up so it's even good. 
And then we're gonna sew around that. And I am going to mark the center and do my center um, one at the same time, which is why I, you can fold it in half. I marked my centers on my piece so I can see it. So that is it right there. So I'm going to sew around here and then I'm gonna come up the center and back down and then keep sewing the rest of the way. So I do it all um, in one swoop, okay? So I'm just basting the sides and the bottom and then I'm separating the pocket as I go. And then I just go back down. And it gives it kind of a double reinforcement there on the stitching as well. All right. And there is our slip pocket. All right, let's go on to the next step. Okay, so next we're doing the top um, recessed zipper panel. So I marked evenly across my zipper right there and I'm going to split it open just like that. I'm gonna pinch where I marked it. We're doing that 90 degree little angle to do that finished look on one end. And I just fold it down just like that, okay? And then I put a pin in it, put a pin in it. And then I do the same thing on the other side. Pinch, pull it down, just like that. Put a pin in it. And then you can hand sew that um, along there if that's easier for you. I do it with my machine. And I'm just gonna stitch that down on the edge so it doesn't go anywhere. I do a couple hand cranks and then I do the rest with my foot, just like that. And that has our little 90 degree turn. Now, if this does not work for you the first time around, don't get frustrated. It takes practice to get this right, um, to get this every time. It took me a few tries to figure out what method worked for me the best, and I have my set ways on certain things, and this is one of them. Okay. So that is that. And then you want to trim that so it's even with the zipper. Along there. And along here. And then I also melt my edges, if I can find my lighter. What did I do with it? There's one. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Melt your little edges there in any thread. Okay, just like that. And so when you zip it up, it should be even. Okay, so next I'm going to sew my end shut, just sew my zipper doesn't fly off for some reason. I am gonna put a zipper end cap on there at the end as well. So I'm not doing a tab, I'm doing like a metal um, zipper cap. Okay, so these are my four pieces. I'm doing this just a little bit differently. Um, you fold down in the pattern, you only fold down one end of all of your pieces. I do both ends. Just a fourth inch with some double-sided tape, so they're all folded down, and they're all even. It's just a little bit different method. Um, both work. The way she has the pattern done and the way I'm doing, they both work just fine. So choose which method works for you, but this is the way I am doing it. So I have both ends folded down. I'm going to take it and place it about right where... Um, I have folded it right where that ends is where I put my zipper. That's where my zipper starts, okay? So it's about a fourth inch in for me. And I'm just gonna clip that down 
and I'm gonna baste that onto my zipper. And then I'll add my lining piece on the bottom side of it. So I like to just kind of unzip that and get that out of the way once it's uh, clipped in place. So now I'm just basting this down right sides together. So the right side of my zipper, right side of my top panel piece. Okay. And then I'm going to take my lining piece, this one, and I'm going to sandwich it on the other side. So right sides are still together and I want to line up these pieces perfectly there. And that will get my good um, wind up zipper panel. And when you do it this way, you have a little wiggle room you can readjust. So if you line up one side, when you come down here, and if this side isn't lined up exactly, you can readjust with this bottom one. You just pull it up and make it longer or shorter or however you need it, which is why I kind of like this method for me. Um, yeah. So mine is pretty good. I don't need to adjust. All right, so now I'm gonna sew it at a fourth inch seam allowance together. Okay. And you don't want to go over onto your zipper when you're sewing this panel piece. You don't want to, you want to make sure and stop on your actual zipper panel. Because if you go over here, then it's going to show. And you don't want that. Okay, so now that one side is on there, I'm going to flip them both out. And I'm going to top stitch around them. Okay. So this is where it's important that those lined up because now, see how nice that is? And like I said, either method works. The one that she has written in the pattern is a great way to do it as well. This is just the way I prefer it. Okay, so I am going to, I kind of pull as I go on that. We're gonna go ahead and Top stitch that all down, and you can also stitch it closed as well. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to stitch along all four sides. Just kind of pulling it out as I go here. Sorry, get you a little closer in there. And then I come down this side, and then I'm going to stitch this closed along this edge as well. So that's one side of my zipper panel. See how my edges line up nice? All right, so go ahead and repeat on the other side. Now this time, just make sure that you're lining up with the side that you just did, okay? That's important. So I kind of start out here and make sure these two line up so they're even. And it should be right there. You should be good. And I'm going to do it from this way. And I'm just basting this on. Okay. 
Okay. Next piece. On top, make a sandwich. Clip it all together. Make sure they line up. Yeah. And it looks good. They line up. I'm not going to have to adjust that at all. All right. So fourth inch seam allowance. Sew that all together. Stitch that out. Sorry for the loud footsteps if you hear them. All right, here we go. So that is your zipper panel, just like that. And we're going to go ahead to the next step and add it to our lining. Okay, so now we're going to put our zipper panel um, pieces together with our lining pieces and our top lining pieces. So you want to take your zipper pocket panel side and your panel that we just finished. And I have already clipped my centers, so I know where I'm gonna put this. So my centers are right there. So if you don't have your centers marked, do that. And I'm just gonna baste this onto my lining first. I'm gonna do an eighth inch seam allowance because then when we place our top lining um, piece, it's a fourth inch. So I'm just doing an eighth inch here. And they're both right sides up. So my lining's right side up, my zipper panel is right side up. And then I'm going to take my top lining panel piece and put it face down, okay? So it's in the center. And it should line up to your edges. Maybe it's gonna have just a little bit of an overlap, okay? So center that all up. And then you wanna sew that together at a fourth inch seam allowance, okay? All right, fourth inch seam allowance on this. and then I'm going to flip it up and I'm gonna top stitch it. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it up like that. See, I like to do this part in like my leather or my faux leather or vinyl accent, but you could do this in your outside main color pieces as well. It's totally just whatever your preference is. 
Anyways, okay, so go ahead and top stitch. So when I top stitch, my seam allowance is going uh, pressed up towards the lining top. And I'm top stitching on this lining top piece. So I'm stitching through all of those layers that we just sewed. And it just helps everything lay a bit nicer. All right, so that's the first side. That's what that looks like. So you're gonna go ahead and flip it over like this and we're gonna do the same thing on the next lining side. So get your centers lined up right there and do the same exact thing. All right, so that is how the top goes together, and that is our lining pieces, see? And then I will put a little zipper stop on that at the end. Um, if you wanna put a zipper tab on it, you can. All right, let's go to the gussets. Okay, so I have my two side pieces and my bottom piece. We are going to take those side pieces. Here's my side piece and my bottom piece. And we are gonna sew those together at a half inch seam allowance, okay? Just like that, and then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna top stitch through our bottom piece here, just right next to that seam. We're gonna top stitch that down. Just like that. So go ahead and repeat on the other side of this thing, of this bottom panel. Connect your other side panel to that and do the same steps. Okay, so that's our um outer gusset. Go ahead and get your pieces and do the same exact steps for your lining pieces, okay? I've got my lining pieces here, same things. And those are our gusset pieces. All right, so I'm gonna put a new bobbin in and we'll continue. Okay, so everybody's favorite part. Um, we're going to clip the gusset onto the front and back um, panels of our exterior. So I have all my centers clipped. I took my exterior pieces and I clipped these corners. That's what it says to do. Uh, in the pattern. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know if I need to clip 
on here too. I'm not sure. I've never done this before. Okay, so we're going to mark our centers first here down at the bottom, right sides together. And I'm starting with my, this is my front panel piece um, that I have. And I just like to do my bottom first. And then we're going to go up to our edges here. We're going to go up to this edge first. And I'm going to clip up here and come down and try and get everything to line up together. Just like that and come down. Now for me, I find I have better luck if I clip my actual gusset. So I am going to clip my gusset here. And I'm not doing huge clips, like maybe eighth to a fourth. Your seam allowance is um, one is a half, so if you keep your clips at about one eighth to one fourth inch, you should be good. All right, so I'm just gonna ease all that in. Yeah, I would definitely suggest clipping the gusset, um, the actual gusset panel piece. I feel like it helps it um, ease around these curves a little bit better. Yep. Okay, so that's one side, just like that. And I'm gonna go over to this other side here and match up the top. And then do the same thing coming down. to clip this part again right here. Pretty good fit. You shouldn't have many issues. Like it lays in pretty nicely. Okay, so that is how we have it clipped. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew that on. Half inch seam allowance. Um, and then we're going to flip that over and we're going to do the same thing on this side with our other side of our exterior.
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another row of stitching right next to the row I just did, just to um, reinforce this line of stitching and make sure it's not being pulled when I turn it out. Um, when people say they have a problem with their stitches showing, this is a good solution to that. I do this on a lot of my bags. You don't have to do this. This is just something that I choose to do because I feel like it does help in the finished outcome in my bags. And I forgot to say, I don't usually go all the way to the top with that double row because sometimes um, it gets in the way of this laying flat when you top stitch it all together. I actually w accidentally went all the way to the top with this one, but that's okay. That's just one side. Okay, so that is one side. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead and clip the other side onto my bag. Here we go, so here's my other piece. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I just did. Find your centers first. Okay, so this is our exterior and I am going to go ahead and I am going to um, trim up my seam allowances to a fourth inch along each side and then we're gonna work on our lining. Okay, so next I have my lining pieces, my gusset and my lining pieces. Um, we're gonna put those together. So I'm gonna unzip all the way here. And I'm gonna start on this side. Just wanna get this kind of like up and out of the way. And do this exactly like we did our exterior. I've already got my centers marked. Okay, and I'm just gonna clip it just like we did our exterior. The only difference with this is for my bag, my bag's pretty stiff and I don't think it's gonna fit through that pocket very easily. So I am going to leave a hole in my lining as well, a pretty nice big hole um, in my lining, and I am going to pull my bag through the lining part and then close up my lining through the open zipper and then close my open zipper. That is my preferred birthing method I usually like to do it that way. It just usually gives you a little bit bigger area to pull everything through. So, um, and you probably will want to clip your gusset curve here. I do. Um, the only difference with our lining is that 
we are going to start at that half inch seam allowance and we're gonna increase to three fourths as we go around. You can see my really full trash bag. <laughs> I need to take out my trash. Um, we're going to increase it to three fourths as we go around to ensure that it fits into our bag nicely and that we don't have a baggy lining. But make sure that you begin and end at that half inch seam allowance so your top, um, top part of your bag lines up with your exterior, your interior and your exterior line up together. All right, go to the other side here. Line up your top. Clip my gusset here. I tried to get this all filmed before they came home from school and it just didn't happen. So I'm so sorry for all the loud footsteps upstairs. <laughs> what can you do? Okay. All right, so there is my first one. We're gonna sew that on. And my lining is never as pretty as my outside. Like I usually have some bumps and weird things in my lining, um, but I don't stress about it because when your bag is all done and everything's finished, you cannot see all the weird bumps and things in your lining. So. I don't stress too much about this whole part being perfect. So just FYI, if you're like, oh my gosh, what she's doing? I'm just not stressing about it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna increase to that three fourths. Make sure you don't get any zipper panel pieces or other pieces in your stitch here. Like I try to smooth it out as best I can, but especially when you're working with waterproof canvas, it's just hard to get smooth when you're doing the linings. So that's that. If you use cotton for your lining, you can smooth it out a little bit easier than you can this waterproof canvas. All right, and then don't forget to go back to that half inch seam allowance up here at the top. That's super important for finishing the bag. All right, and I am going to trim that seam allowance down around here. I don't do it at the top because I feel like it lays um, better in the bag when it has more to work with at the top. I don't know if that makes sense, but. <laughs> the joys, okay. Now let's do our other piece. Now make sure that this didn't twist around and get all weird. 
Um, I have had like, because it's all connected here, like if it twists around like this and you put it in the wrong way, then you're gonna be super sad. So make sure that it's all the correct way and that it's not twisted. All right, so mark your centers and do the same exact thing, except this time I am leaving a hole. I am choosing to leave a hole on the bottom of mine. You don't have to. You can pull through the pocket if you feel like your bag can do that. I don't, I always feel like the pockets are so hard to get bags through. I am also going to go down like this just to reinforce that when I pull it through. You see how I just came down? I'm just doing that so I can reinforce where I need to stop. Do the same over here, that right here. So that is my lining. I've got my exterior, I've got my hole in my lining. Um, I am going to attach my handles and my D-ring connectors to my exterior before we sew it all together. I'm doing that a little bit differently too. I'm going to sew it with my lining inside of my exterior. Um, because I feel like it's harder to stuff my exterior inside my lining to finish it. So um, I, as long as your right sides are together, you can do it either way. So I've got my D-rings and I've got my handles. So I've got one D-ring done right there. I'm gonna do the other one here. So here's my piece just into the center. Let me sew those down. And the other side, sew that down. There goes my D ring. <laughs> To your connector just like that and I'm just gonna baste that closed okay so you want your d-rings to go on the sides of your bags here on the side of your bag and I've got my side Oh my goodness, this is hard. I'm not used to doing it from this angle. <laughs> I've got it clipped right there, so I know that's my center. And I think matching raw edges, no overhang. So I just center that up right there. 
clip it so you want it on the right side of your bag. I know this is a little bit different than the pattern because my exterior is wrong side out. Um, but I feel like there's no need to turn it right side out to do this. Okay, and then I'm just gonna baste those on there. Okay. It would be easier if my bag was turned the other way to do this part, but luckily it's not a huge, big stitch I have to do. It's just a little basting stitch. All right, so I got my D-rings on, and now I'm going to do my handles. I have one right here. I don't know if I'm gonna want them longer. I did it the length that the pattern had, which was, I think, 14. So here is my other handle. I'll show you how I did that. I just marked the center, put double-sided tape on each side, kind of away from that line, so my needle's not going through it, because I don't wanna gum up my needle. So I always try and keep any tape that I put on handles and crossbody straps out of where I'm going to be stitching. All right, and then fold that in half and then stitch that together. She's okay. Okay, so we're gonna put on our handles to the bag. We've got our D-rings, we're gonna do our handles. You measure from this curved inside part here of the bag, measure a half inch in, and that's your handle placement there and there. Okay, I've already basted those down. So now I'm gonna do it on the bottom one. So a half inch in, I've already got it marked. I'm gonna place one side of the handle down there right there, and I'm gonna baste it. I just need them to be even on all four sides. All right. And then bring it around and make sure that it's not twisted when you do. You gotta make sure that you don't twist those handles. And then I'm gonna place it on this side, a half inch in at my mark. Okay. And then we'll baste that down right there. I'm just doing an eighth inch in because then when you sew it to your lining, it'll be stitched again and it'll have that extra support. Okay, so I have my D-rings on, I have my handles on. It's time to put this whole bag together. All right, so I'm gonna get my lining. Let me make sure I didn't leave out any, nope, okay. So remember I have the big hole in the bottom of my lining. That's what I'm gonna pull my bag through. Um, if you want, you can just use the zipper pocket. You don't have to leave a hole in your lining, it's up to you. And then we just need to attach this all together. So I want, zipper to be on this side, right? 
Okay. So I am putting my lining, oh, whoops. Haha. Uh -huh. Make sure your right sides are together. So I need to turn my lining right side out because I'm doing my inside my exterior. If you're doing it the way the pattern says to, then your lining is wrong side out and your exterior is right side out. It doesn't matter as long as your right sides are together. Okay. I'm gonna go like this. together and my puppy is caught in a cord just a minute <laughs> you see her <laughs> Marley are you stuck are you okay come here come here come hit your bone okay sorry about that she's cute though okay <laughs> all right so we're going to take and make sure your handles are in d-ring connectors are down and we're just going to start clipping all of our edges. Now you can lay your seams flat or you can do them nesting. It's your choice. I feel like when I lay them flat like that, it's a little bit easier. Marley May. We have to take a break and let the dog out. Hey, baby. All right. So I match my seams first, and then I go around matching my centers and go that way. did read in the pattern she suggests marking your half inch along your curves and it might help with sewing this up and I think I am gonna do that like along here mark your half inch and it'll help you keep a better curve and a seam allowance so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick I'm just gonna mark a half inch along there and connect it along both curves and then I'll finish clipping that. Okay, so I marked a half inch on my curve there. So when I sew, I kind of have a guideline for where I need to be. So hopefully both sides will somewhat be even when I do that. So I'm just gonna finish clipping my pieces and then we will sew that up. It all fits pretty dang nice. There's no big weird gaps or anything. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do half inch seam allowance and now that I see that, I should have marked on the inside of my bag because usually when I sew these together, <laughs> I go on the inside of my bag. Well, we'll try it. Okay, so mark it on the inside of your bag, guys, not your outside. <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. All right, there we go. Half inch seam allowance. 
go slow. So these two together. Here we go. Guess we can see how well I did there. Let's see. That's pretty close. Yeah, not bad. A little off right there. I wonder if I should. I'm going to fix that real quick. So, yes, I would suggest doing the guidelines for your curves here. I think it would make a huge difference. So now that you have them sewn together, we're going to trim it down everywhere except for where your connectors are. And I actually, I am going to do one more row of stitching right where the connectors are, the handles, just to give them a little extra. I'm just gonna go around and do that. Now trim it down. So trim down everywhere except for along those connectors and your handles. And then we'll turn the bag out. And I'm going to use pinking shears along um, along my curve. So really Right there, right there. Not a lot of trimming actually, because you don't want to trim the connectors down. All right, let me get my pinking shears here. You can just use regular scissors too. This is just what I'm choosing to do. Oh, 
That's what I'm doing. Here's the, the part that always makes me nervous. Let's turn this bag out. Okay. So, Cute. All right. Here's the gist. <laughs> That's cute. I like it a lot. All right. So what we need to do to finish this is we're going to pull our lining through our pocket. Well, make sure you have everything poked out the way you want it up top, too, and that you don't have to go through with your hand. But um, mine looks pretty good. I don't think I need to worry about that. I think it's okay. Okay, so you want to um, finish off the lining. So we're going to pull this out. And I am going to get my pocket here. I'm going to grab my lining and pull it through the pocket. Gives your hands a workout. That's for sure. All right, so see we have our lining through there now best you can. Give yourself a lot of room here to work with it. And I'm going to clip this all together. And then we'll sew up our lining. And then we'll sew up our pocket and top stitch. There. Like that. And then you can trim down that seam as well if you want to, which I will do. And then you stick it back in. Right here. 
I just think I would have struggled trying to pull this bag through the pocket. I don't, that's just, maybe that's just me, but this would be my, if I were to do it again, I would, oh, whoops, I would do it through the lining again, I think, just because my hands struggle and that's usually easier for me if I have a wider opening to pull through. So, if you're going all cotton and you're not using really thick, heavy interfacing, the pocket was probably fine. But with the faux leather, I would definitely recommend the lining. Or the, yeah, the lining way. Okay, I'm just mumbling now. All right, close off your pocket. situating everything here. Yeah, the lining fits really good with that, how we did the three-fourths inch seam allowance. I would definitely recommend doing that. All right, so now I just need to top stitch. And I do need to add my zipper end. And that is it. All in all, this is a pretty quick little bag. I like it a lot. Oh my goodness. Always throwing my clips. I'm just all that down. Okay, one more. Right here. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch. I, if you struggle getting this under your machine, um, one way to do it is to turn the bag inside out again and top stitch from the inside like we put the bag together. Um, I am going to just try to top stitch it like it is without turning it inside out. So we'll see how I do. I'm going to start on the side. Here we go. And I have my piece of um, leather handy for going over any big bumps. Like right here on these parts. Yep, you're gonna need to put something behind your foot especially if using something other than cotton for all your layers. See how nicely that goes over when you stick it behind?
All right. Let's see how this looks. it up here all right my zipper kind of fell off guys that's okay I'll fix that all right I gotta fix my zipper I'm gonna put my zipper end cap on and then we'll be done all right I'm gonna put my my little zipper cap on real quick I'll just show you how I like to do it. I don't, again, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way, but this is how I do it. So I cut it a little bit at an angle here. Like that, make sure you melt your edges. And then I'm gonna fold them back like that. Okay, and I am gonna put just a little drop of glue into my cap, not a ton, just a little bit. All right, so I fold it like that. And I'm just going to stick this in there. Push it in there really good. That's how mine looks in the back. That's how it looks in the front. And then you just put your little screw in. It's hard to get a good view of this. I do like to, oh, come on. I do like to hold my zipper tape in place too. And it just kind of, if things shift, okay, give it a good tug. It's on there. There it is. Okay, there's your zipper end. Okay, guys, we did it. This is our Ruby handbag. Oh, it's cute. I like it a lot. It's got a lot of room. It's really big on the bottom, so it's really wide inside. Um, I really like the contrast of the different pieces. I love this front pocket. If you didn't want to do a flap, you could do just a snap or you don't have to do a twi turn lock, I mean. You could do a snap here, but I really like how that turn lock adds to it. Um, all right, that's it. Again, this was my first go around with this. I don't, I didn't see any difficulties in this pattern. I don't know if you can see that. I felt like it was very well written because of course backstock designs are all amazing and they're all written so well. Um, go give this pattern a try. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll try and answer them. And thank you for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe. I am trying to get more videos out there. I took kind of a break and hopefully we'll get some good content up on here for you all. So Thank you so all for so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.